It's a myth that newborn babies just sleep, feed, poo and cry. It's also a myth that babies just need their physical needs to be met through feeding them, bathing them, changing their nappies and creating a quiet, cosy space for them to sleep to help them stay healthy and grow. People sometimes say that newborns don't really do much and aren't really aware of what's going on around them. Well, that's another myth too. Did you know that what your baby experiences in the first 1001 days of their life is critically important for building their early brain development as well as protecting their future health and well-being? The first 1001 critical days is the period from conception to your little one's second birthday. People often just count a baby's age from the day they're born, but a full-term baby is actually born with nine months of experience and is a really capable social being. One of the most important ways that you can nurture your baby's development is through your love and social engagement with them. Even before a baby is born, their brain is developing at a phenomenal rate. Around 250,000 brain cells are being created every minute while your baby's in the womb, and their five senses are also developing. One sense that begins to develop in the first 16 weeks of pregnancy is hearing, with babies feeling sound vibrations in the early weeks before they begin to hear them. This means that unborn babies can hear and learn to recognise the voices of their mother and close family members before they are even born. Mother Nature helps this learning process as the human voice is one of the few sounds that's not distorted by the mother's body tissues and amniotic fluid, so the baby hears those voices the way they sound outside the womb. That's why when babies are born they will turn towards their parents' voice quicker than they will turn towards the stranger's voice, because they've been listening to those voices for many months and it's familiar to them. So talking with your baby, telling them a story or singing during pregnancy can promote their brain development, help them to learn and nurture your relationship with them even before they're born. Research has shown us that babies learn during pregnancy, particularly in trimester three, and can remember what they've learned after birth. For example, if you sang a particular song or lullaby to your baby during pregnancy, you may notice that your little one shows that they recognise the pattern of that song after they're born. By the time a baby is born full term, their amazing brain will have created 100 billion brain cells. Every baby is born hardwired to communicate and they'll seek out love and social connection with their caregivers from that very first day. It's really important to point out that although a baby is born with billions of brain cells, they're not yet fully connected. The way those cells connect is through social experience. So the way that you express your love for your baby through the way you hold them, soothe them, respond to their coos and cries, talk, smile and play with them, will create connections between their brain cells and shape their brain in a way that will help them to learn and reach their full potential. How you sensitively respond and interact with your baby in the first months and years of their life is especially important because it's a time when brain pathways are forming through experience and when many brain pathways reach their peak. For example, this image shows us how rapidly a baby's sensory pathways are forming before birth and during their first months as a newborn. It also shows that a baby's language pathway is developing at an immense rate and peaking around nine months, even before they've spoken their first formal word. Interestingly, a baby can hear every speech sound in every language until around nine months before the brain begins to screen out sounds that don't appear in their mother tongue. This emphasises how important it is to socially interact with your baby during their first months and years of life as the brain cells that have fired together through regular social experience wire together to create neural pathways that will be retained when the brain goes through a natural pruning process that begins around a baby's first birthday. 
Pruning is mother nature's way of shaping a baby's brain according to their unique lived experience. By discarding the excess brain cells that have not been activated during that first postnatal year. This is because there's just not enough space in a baby's skull to connect all the 100 billion brain cells they were born with. So Mother Nature assumes that the brain cells that have not been activated by then mustn't be essential for that little one's specific developmental journey based on their lived experiences so far. However, the good news is that the brain continues to adapt through experiences across the lifespan. So even if a little one hasn't had the best start through exposure to early life adversities, their brain will continue to make the most of any positive experiences that happen now or in the future. Engaging with your newborn is not only important to promote their early brain development, but it is a special time when early relationships can grow. Holding your baby, engaging with them through your facial expressions and voice, as well as sensitively responding to their cues, not only helps your little one to feel secure, but also teaches them about themselves and the world around them. We call this the internal working model, which is like an inner template that we all have, which is shaped in the first years of our lives through the way that we're loved, cared for and responded to. So for example, when a baby is in a quiet alert state, they feel relaxed and are emotionally available to interact with their caregivers and the world around them. They say that attachment is the mirror that you hold up for your baby to see. So if your facial expressions and voice expresses love and pleasure when you engage with your baby, they will internalise that they are someone who feels loved, is deserving of love and brings pleasure to those around them. That will also build their sense of self-worth and help them to feel safe. Equally, if that baby cries because they're feeling overwhelmed and their caregiver sensitively responds, this reinforces to the baby that they are loved, that they are worth being responded to and they can trust those around them to try their best to help. Crying is a meaningful part of a baby's language, which tells us that they're feeling overwhelmed and they're asking for help. When a caregiver sensitively responds by consoling a baby who's becoming unsettled or crying, this is known as co-regulation. This is a really important process to protect the baby's fragile developing brain from the higher levels of stress hormones that are produced when a baby cries for a long time. Sensitively responding also protects the baby's internal working model and the parent-baby relationship. That's because when a caregiver notices that their baby is becoming overwhelmed by the big feelings rising up in them and responds by providing comfort, the caregiver is helping to transfer those big feelings from the baby onto them. The caregiver then processes those big feelings for the baby and then gives them back as a smaller package that the little one can cope with. Over time, this helps the baby to develop better self-regulation and coping skills with the support of their caregiver, which positively shapes the baby's brain and nurtures a secure relationship. They say that babies don't come with an instruction manual, but all babies are born with a universal language that we can learn through observing their facial expressions, body language and vocal sounds. This rich vocabulary helps newborns to show us how they're feeling, how they're coping, how hard they're working to self-regulate, as well as their unique skills, strengths, likes, dislikes and support needs. The Brazilton approach has really helped us to discover the amazing capabilities of newborns with the NBAS and the NBO offering caregivers a wonderful opportunity to get to know their baby on a much deeper level. Through this approach we've also learned that the brain development of babies is not a straightforward journey but one that involves lots of developmental leaps. Dr. Brazelden called the period leading up to a leap 
a touch point, which is often a time when caregivers will notice changes in their baby's behaviours, such as becoming unsettled or crying more often, seeking more comfort, changes in their sleeping patterns, feeding more or less than usual, and even changes in soiled nappies. This is because as the brain changes, the whole body system needs to adjust. These behaviour changes can sometimes feel that they've happened suddenly, and it can also feel like your baby has regressed to an earlier period in their development. However, this is actually a period of progress, as your baby's brain is going through incredible changes to move them forward in their development. We can think about what's happening in your little one's brain at this time, a bit like building a Lego model. As your little one is experiencing their touch point, they begin to dismantle their Lego model to rebuild it in a more sophisticated way. Once your baby has completed this process, they will take a leap forward in their brain development and you may notice them beginning to try out a new skill. Any unsettled behaviours will usually begin to settle down around now too, at least until the next touch point. The good news is that these leaps happen at predictable times, as shown in this image. As you can see, newborns will experience several touch points in the first months of their life and will continue to experience them periodically through infanthood and beyond. That is why it's especially important to look after your well-being as a caregiver because there will be times when your little one will need extra support from you to help them through their developmental journey. Babies often show us how well they're coping or how hard they're working through their hands. In a way, a baby's hands are their tools. Often when babies are in a quiet alert state, their hands will be relaxed with one or both arms placed down by their side. When you notice your baby bringing their hands towards the middle of their body, holding them near their chest or their face, or even sucking on them, they're demonstrating that they're having to work harder at that moment to self-regulate in response to the external stimuli around them or internal stimuli in their body. External stimuli may be making it more difficult because the environment around them may be too busy, noisy, warm, bright or any social interaction is becoming too much and they may need a break. Or internal stimuli like hunger, tiredness, discomfort or pain may be demanding more of their energy. Regardless of what is causing the baby to work harder, it's often a cue that they need extra support from their caregivers at that time. Again, responding to your baby's cues not only helps them to cope better in the moment, but strengthens the brain pathways associated with love, empathy, trust and secure relationships. It's worth adding that as babies become more alert around four to six weeks after birth, they may become even more keen to interact with their caregivers when they're in a quiet alert state. If you're engaging with your baby, you may notice them holding their hands to their chest as they work hard to self-regulate and stay in the conversation. You may also notice that sometimes your baby will look away with their eyes or even turn their head away for a few moments. This is called time out and is a baby's way of taking a short break to self-regulate and recharge their energy. If you notice your baby taking time out, it's important to just give them a moment by pausing the conversation and waiting until they turn back to rejoin the conversation with you when they're ready. Again, that reinforces the message to your little one that they're loved, that you noticed that they needed a break and that you're delighted to welcome them back to the conversation. It's through positive social engagement with caregivers in the first months and years of life that teaches babies what it feels like to be loved, to be shown empathy, to learn how to ask for help and to trust that the people around them will respond. Not this not only gives them the best start during the first 1001 days of their life, but provides them with a firm foundation to build their future health and development upon. This first-hand experience also helps babies to grow into children and adults who will know how to show love, care and empathy to others. 
often how we were parented influences how we go on to parent. That means that the way you respond to your little one will influence how they may respond to their own children one day. So, the love you show your baby today will create a lasting legacy for generations to come. Parents are the experts of their babies and usually make the best caregiving choices based on the knowledge and resources they have at the time. Both parenthood and babyhood is a work in progress and your caregiving approach will no doubt adapt in response to your little one's evolving needs and your growing insights. No one knows your baby better than you, so enjoy getting to know them and trust your instincts. I hope that this video has been interesting and will help you to promote your baby's early development through nurturing your relationship and enjoying social experiences together. Wishing you and your little one lots of love in your journey ahead.